online this morning, which is great. We've got uh, obviously a full crew to this morning. Uh, we got three folks presenting you all the fun information today. We have a great group on site today, so we're uh, we're ready to rock and roll here. So, yeah. You're wearing black, though. Black's part yeah, of the Your theme. shoes. Yeah. You got the you guys right. met. The fox. There you go. Yeah. I like the socks. You got it. You're good. You're in there. <laughs> it's like a party. <laughs> you're, you're, you're fine. You yeah. color coordinated. <laughs> exactly. That's the important part. <laughs> so for those that don't know, and just a quick reminder, we have Octave here, who is our member services supervisor. Hopefully, she's wearing her name tag. I can't I see from right here. here. And then we have Cecilia, who is our catering coordinator. She's also here today. Uh, both of which ran uh, Seven Summit Tier Live last week while I was uh, on site at a soccer game. So, uh, yeah, I was gone. You missed it when I was gone. <laughs> I was so doing it live. The, our bad you know, one. I guess left <laughs> me unmuted. I thought I was muted the whole time, but I guess not. Um, I got another game this afternoon, last soccer game of the season. So Ooh. we win, we get first place. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, we got a good group, and we've got a couple more people that are going to be more involved with Summit Tier Live. Our new director of food and beverage, uh, Chef Dino Cruz, will be involved. Our new food and beverage manager, Leslie Westfall, she'll be involved. So, uh, and then, hey, Paula's coming back in a couple of weeks. So, life's going to be really good. So, um, the, uh, you won't have my boring voice all the time. I was going to say, do you, know, do you know what that means? Yeah, it means There's going to be like four people here to tease you. There'll actually be people that pay attention because I, I won't be uh, talking as much. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're in the the presenting crew will outweigh the audience. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing, but we'll see. Uh, I do want to say that there, there has been a lot of people watching on YouTube, um, and we're getting anywhere from 20 to 50 people watching every week. So I really do appreciate all those uh, members that are, that are tuning in uh, from YouTube. Thank you for doing that. It's, a, it's really great to see um, the support in all the different opportunities that we present this. Um, so thank you all for doing that. Uh, let's get started. So first event we're going to talk about is our afternoon tea. And um, we've got, uh, these are some of the pictures from, I should, it should go on my clicker, but let's see how it works. Okay, so we got afternoon tea here, which we did last Sunday. Uh, both of you worked it. Why don't you guys talk about it? Yeah, year? I thought it went really good. People seemed really happy. The food was delicious. I mean, our chefs are just so good. And it was a really nice fun event. We hope we can start making more of those. Yeah, we've definitely heard a lot of really great feedback. People like it. They want to see it again. Um, and so have already been bugging Jason about the next time he can let us do that. Yeah, we're working on another one. And I wanted to mention, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I had mentioned that my I used to collect teacups. And I don't see it here. But somebody did have a Royal Albert teacup, I saw. Yes, uh, it was on the other side. It looked like the old country rose plot, uh, print, which was a little different, but uh, it was very similar to the one that I collect. So I was I was watching all that. Stuff I like the sure. the Lurvies. Their teacups were Russian, and they were very cute. They have the little um, kind of like a rooster on them. Mm -hmm. uh, I think those are my favorite. Bright colors. colors. That's yeah, cool. yes. I love the brighter the bright so teacups. Yeah, yes. yeah, you could you could bring your own, or we had teacups. Yes, um, Octave we and I went on an expedition to Absolutely. find teacups. It was so fun. Yeah. We got so distracted. <laughs> we we're like, look at these teacups, and then we found like this really tiny piece that. Still yeah, thinking about it. Oh yes. Absolutely. I loved it. They We got tagged in them. And yes. every time somebody commented, we'd get notified. And so I'd have like five notifications of like so-and-so commented and all of them were like, we'd love to see this again. And I'm just like, yes, thank you. Yeah. Because yeah. Is there a sort of a diplomatic way you can say you need to go to the first one? Priority and just, just yeah, it's tough. We have all that record. Yeah, we can pull that up. Um, it kind of just depends on timing and such. If we're able to plan eight weeks ahead and be able to contact those people, then yes, we will we will do that. If it's something where we're like, hey, it's a great opportunity to do it in three Sundays, you know, we don't want to not 
yeah, put it on MTL. And, and we're, but it kind of depends on the situation, but yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and sometimes we put out feelers um, uh, for upcoming events. And so those people tend to have a little more priority, mm -hmm. say like uh, the Hamilton um, trip that we're doing in August, we put out feelers through the theaters club and, um, and a couple other different uh, uh, groups. And, you know, they kind of had a little bit of a, a early access to the posting for that. So it's worked out really well. Uh, new fitness classes. So for those that uh, are unaware, the pool will be closed starting Monday uh, for at least about three weeks as we do our annual maintenance. Uh, but luckily this year, our um, fitness, our water aerobics trainer, uh, she's agreed to do uh, classes uh, on land. So a um, little bit different for her. Not really. She's, she's a personal, or she's a fitness instructor anyway. So, but she's doing a foam rolling class on Tuesdays at nine, basic cardio uh, boxing and bands Tuesday at 10, Roxy's beginner circuit class, uh, which would be in base camp at 2.30, uh, a little bit similar to Todd's, but more of a beginner version, and then a Friday fitness with Roxanne at 10 a.m. So a uh, bunch of different classes, and that Friday fitness one is kind of something different where it's 30-minute time frames, uh, and it's kind of a little bit of a choose-your-own-adventure. So mm -hmm. um, really uh, excited that we have Roxanne to have stepped up and changed her program uh, while the uh, while the pool will be closed for a little bit. And who knows, maybe these events end up being stuff that uh, she continues on when the pool reopens. Yeah, Jason, many, 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 many months ago, right? Yeah. Yes. We met with the gal front, I don't know who it was at the time, but we wanted, it sounded like we were supposed to have an introduction to the workout or to the gym. Yes. By Todd, I guess that's the same. Yep, Todd or Fawn, yeah. yep. Never happened. Twice we called to say, hey, he was supposed to call us. She took out the information. We never happened. Okay. My question is this. Number one, is it something that we should do so that we can, we can familiarize our, us with the equipment? Yeah. Or is it necessary? So uh, necessary? No. You don't have to do our orient, uh, uh, kind of our health assessment prior to using any of the equipment. No. Um, yes, it's totally available to every member as a complimentary thing we offer. Our trainers, both Fawn and Todd, offer complimentary health assessment classes. And it's basically kind of a, you know, learn about the equipment. Uh, the trainers put you through some movements and some exercises to see where your comfort level is. And then after that, they kind of say, okay, here's, you know, working with you on what are your goals? What do you want to see? What do you want to do? And they can help you from there. And then, and then that you can just take that information and go work in base camp all on your own and figure it out. Or you can also hire their services for additional training. But all members need to do is contact concierge. I'll make sure they'll follow up with you again. But yeah, you just let, typically let concierge know and they let the trainers know and the trainers reach out from there. So, okay. I mean, but yeah. I, mean, I know that he's busy because he's doing other things, but we did it twice. Yeah. And nobody called us. Sure. Well, we'll, we'll take care of that today. One day university. Oh, sorry. Okay. Octave was going to talk about it. <laughs> A one day university. Once again, we're back to rehearsed, obviously, <laughs> versions of this. Oh, so we have one day university continuing uh, in April. Um, I believe next up we have the cryptocurrency. We have future in space. So we have kind of the next week is a little bit sci-fi future uh, theme. And then we go back in time looking at Cleopatra, her life, um, Winston Churchill in his darkest hour. Um, and then we go back even farther for presidents. Uh, President's Day, President's Week, uh, when we look at John Adams and Grant's presidency. Mm -hmm. Oh, Roosevelt, yeah. They're, they're well done, aren't they? Yeah, I just wish Yeah, absolutely. It's really cool, One Day University, the way that they, they reach out and the, um, the opportunities that they give these instructors, these professors, um, to really dive into specific parts of history like this. Like with Cleopatra, 
um, they're able to dive in. I know they're going to talk about like her fashion and stuff like that, which is such a, a niche thing to look at, but it's really interesting. And it does tie in a lot to the history around her. Um, and so it's really nice that they're able to do that. And I know a few more of the talks that we have coming up are the um, extended talks where they have the live Q&A with the professor afterwards. Um, and so that's always really cool because then you get to that opportunity to ask questions and to listen uh, and dive a little bit deeper into the presentation. And we learned that she's actually a good actor herself. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Wow. I had no idea. Now you know. Now you know. The more you know. <laughs> uh, SSL Sightseers, we are heading to Skagit Valley Tulip Festival. Uh, we've had a huge jump in numbers in the past week, so that was really exciting. Uh, we're going on Tuesday, April 19th, starting at 7 a.m. Mm -hmm. So door-to-door -door trip uh, on the bus. And, yes, the bus takes up the majority of the cost of the event. But really nice service to be able to have, um, you know, sit and enjoy the ride all the way up to the LaConnor, Skagit Valley area. We're going to go visit one of the farms, then go into LaConnor, where it's a cute little town mm -hmm. on the waterfront, uh, do a little shopping, have a little lunch. And then um, uh, head get back on the bus and head to the next uh, next garden, which would be Rusengard. And uh, really nice, really nice experience. This is actually a video from uh, King Five from this morning that I wanted to kind of showcase on here. Sometimes it works on uh, on uh, the streaming part. I don't know if it'll work or not, but at least for the ones on site here. It's, uh, just like we've talked about for many weeks, just the colors. You know, the, the quantity is ridiculous. And if you've been there before, every year they change the design. So even if you've been there before, going every year is amazing because you get to see it completely different and how they've worked through the entire uh, fall to plant and set up the way the garden is going to come and all this magical, um, really, designs and art they do with the flowers. I always thought it was fun until when we went last year with the members there was some the workers there and uh, they had these flags and so they're not really supposed to go in between the aisles and uh, I never noticed this before but they were because of the COVID what's going on and they like out of the aisles you know they were spitting the flags spitting it Getting people out, get over here, you know, really funny. Um, you know, don't, don't ask Doug to call it. <laughs> Sounds like the kind of job I do. <laughs> Walking around the flag, just smacking people to get out of the aisles. I've gone probably every year, probably the last six years for sure. Um, probably been at least ten times. Um, yeah, and like, like Cecilia used to say, it's different every time. They set it, it up is. different every single year. And it's a great opportunity to buy bulbs. They, you see what all the varieties they have. You can purchase them, and then they'll ship them to you when it's time to plant them in the fall. And not only do you get to choose all the massive variety there is, because like you might buy them at local, you know, stores, but they won't have the variety that they have there. And I, mean, I don't know if it's like here, like it is in my house, but the squirrels tend to get to my bulbs. So I need to constantly be replenishing them. It's like I'm just feeding the squirrels. So every, every fall, we need to plant them. That's a good idea. Sometimes until they come through the ground. Once they come through the ground, most generally the chipmunks and squirrels will leave them alone. That's why I put mine in pots, because it's just easier to stretch mesh over. Yeah. That's a good idea. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. On the wall. Oh, yeah. yeah. We need to talk about the most important part. There will be muffins and mimosas yep. on the tour of the morning. Coffee grounds. Oh. And I just found that out this year. You put coffee grounds around the area if you want to keep your birds off, you know, the squirrels off your bird feeders. Put coffee grounds around the area where you can see the squirrels like coming up and jumping up. Same thing with your grounds. Oh, that's good to know. I was a tip of the day right there. But then again, maybe that's why squirrels have so much energy. They're getting to the coffee. <laughs> it, what's also amazing about the Tulip Festival, too, is just the many different varieties. So at Tulip Town, they actually section off an area where they have 
uh, many varieties, not all the varieties, but they've probably got 25, 30 different clumps of the specific variety, but how big they get. Like, they, especially when they get full bloom, I got to put my entire fist down the middle of one, two of them. They get so big. We don't uh, recommend bloom. doing that, but yes. Yeah, don't touch them because then you're going to get the little lady coming around. Now we know why he was getting smacked. She might get a whip this year. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't want to. We're, we're going to be branded, so we don't want to be uh, putting our name out there too much. This might be the last year we're allowed to the two of us. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we do have uh, Mariners tickets, so we had watch party last night, uh, which went really well. So the Mariners won yesterday, so that was exciting. Um, and then uh, we're t- doing a Easter opening day weekend Mariners trip uh, on Easter afternoon. Uh, we've got a bunch signed up for that, actually. I think there's 10 people going to that, so that'll be great. Um, so we have great tickets. We're down on the 100 level. Oh. Uh, uh, comms are here now. So, um, yeah, we've got uh, 100 level seats on Sunday. We're going to start here just like we did for the Chinatown trip. We'll ride over to the light rail, ride the light rail into the stadium, uh, watch a great day game, and uh, celebrate Easter at the park, which should be fun. I'll be there. So you get to hang out with me. <laughs> Highly recommended yeah. then if that's yeah, the case. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. This is for the actual yeah. game. The watch party was the seventh, which ended up being the eighth, actually. Because they moved the game. So they moved the game. And then on the top right, it's actually go to the day game on the 17th. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So we're actually attending two events, the, one slide. <laughs> two for one. We're attending one. the game on um, the 17th, a Sunday. That's uh, Easter Sunday. And then yesterday we had our watch party here. Um, the well, Seattle and dogs yeah. and popcorn. And yeah. yeah, it was fun. We brought it all into the office afterwards. It was really delicious. <laughs> uh, National Jelly Bean Day, uh, April 22nd. You want to talk yeah. about that? So uh, National Jelly Bean Day, we have a few different ways that we're celebrating. Um, so we, one at the concierge desk, will be giving away little sachets of jelly beans you can take home with you and enjoy. Um, we'll also have how many jelly beans, um, in a jar similar to what we had around, uh, Trilogy Loves Chocolate Week when we do the happier hour. Um, and then we also have the blind taste test, which I think is the best part. Um, so we have a big box of assorted flavors of jelly beans. All good flavors. Um, It's like she's been tasting them and making sure that they're good for us. You know, there's jelly bean flavors that are mint for pranks. We will not be using those. We we may. I mean, it would make the event a lot more fun, but we will not be doing that. I mean, more fun for us, I guess. (laughs) They are safe flavors. I promise there's no earwax or vomit mixed in. Um, yeah, those are actual flavors and it makes me so sad. Um, but we'll be doing the blind taste test and so we'll have members come in. Um, you will be blindfolded uh, and guessing the flavors of the jelly beans and there will be a prize. I believe we're doing a mantle gift cards. So that's always fun. Just a nice little thing to celebrate. A classic piece of candy in my opinion. National Jelly Bean also follows on National uh, Earth Day, too. So we also have an Earth Day garden tour um, uh, on the same day as well. So busy, busy day for national recognition. Um, and I believe that event sold out with a wait list. So um, next events, we've got Pet Stock. Uh, so these are actually perfect events for Cecilia because she's actually the one that's running both of these. But she's doing a make-your-own-dog treat class here uh, in in Hudson's on April 26th. And then she's also doing a picnic in the park uh, with your pet over at the, the parks. I don't remember which park, um, but she's doing a, a picnic over at the park uh, to bring your pet over. So we've Definitely. got uh, a few ways to celebrate Trilogy Pet Stock Week um, uh, upcoming at the end of the month. I hope to see everybody at the pet picnic. Um, I will definitely be there. It'll be highly recommended. Highly recommended. Yes. If you have a dog, I will come over and pet the dog. Yes, you should but I'm definitely very come. Excited to do that. I'll bring my dog. I have a little uh, black lab puppy. Way too excited for my. I'll bring my kids. Uh, They're like pets. 
So I, no, I'm not going to bring my kids. Um, no. <laughs> but yeah, if you, yeah, sign up for the picnic. And if you want to learn how to do, it'll be fun. I'll teach you how to do some dog treats. So that's on the 26th. So. And the pet People picnic should... is not just dogs. What you can also you bring your cats uh, or lizards. Reflections. Reflection. Reflection. Oh, uh, just once again, a reminder, two tides will be closed starting April 11th for our annual maintenance. Uh, a lot of members have asked why, why so long? Why does it take three weeks? Well, uh, just kind of a quick snapshot of what we have to do. Drain the pool, which takes uh, a day or two to drain 66,000 gallons of water. Uh, we remove the hydraulic ram, which is this gigantic piece of machinery right here. We have to bring in and uh, rent and bring in a forklift um uh to to dig that up from 10 feet down below in the ground uh which takes a day to do that uh we take the ram down to the shop and they work on that for two to two weeks uh replacing the components inside of it uh we pressure wash everything under underneath it underneath the floor uh clean it um inspect it uh, make sure everything's working correctly and then we reinstall everything once that's reinstalled then we fill the pool and uh, uh, as simple as that sounds, that right there like is probably days? yeah three to four or five days, uh, depending on how fast the water is running. Uh, out of a normal, usually put I think six garden hoses in there, so um, it, it's a uh, big pool. It, it takes <laughs> a while to fill that up, and then we got to heat sixty six thousand gallons of water, and then we got to balance all the chemicals in it. So it does take uh, some time to make sure that it's safe to swim in and that it's up to temperature and all that. But um, we, we're excited because by doing this process for the last few years now, it's really you know, extended the, the operation of it. We haven't had any major issues uh, in the past four years of, with the pool. So it's been really exciting to have this in place to uh, uh, make it a sustainable product. Couple new things that we have upcoming. Uh, so our old, I don't want to say old, but our pre-pandemic gu guitar and ukulele instructor, Dan Laurentano, is coming back. Um, so he'll be teaching an introductory music class uh, on Tuesday, April 26th, which is also the Pet Stock uh, Make Your Own Dog Treat uh, event. But um, he's going to be here Tuesday, April 26th for 12 one. This is kind of his like starter class, his intro to it. Yeah. And then from there, he's going to start up his lessons again that we used to have twice a week, um, four week sessions or six week sessions. Um, so it'll be yeah. really exciting to get Dan So he'll spend like the first 30 minutes talking about the guitar and then the next 30 minutes about the ukulele. And he will go and like talk with people and see where their level's at. So he can go from anywhere from people that have never touched the instrument to people that already have experience and just want to like fine tune their abilities. And so once, yeah, the first one is a complimentary class for everyone to come and see what he's going to be offering. And from there, we're going to work out on his, there's usually like a six week um, class. So and we always did really well with that. We had some quite, he had quite a lot of regulars, which is really great. So we're, we're excited to bring him back after two and a half years. So be good to see Dan again in the club. Yeah, it's never too late to learn an instrument. Uh, and then we've also uh, partnered with a new uh, massage therapist. And so um, Jenny, uh, Massage with Jenny is her company. And so we've hired her to offer some um, uh, massages on April 27th. So uh, she's going to be here from 10 to 12 uh, and offering. Um, They're going to be chair massages. Chair massages. So yes, fully yes. clothed. They're going to be chair massages, but she's an expert on, you know, relaxation and really like helping with your body and you know if you've been working out too much or if you have any aches and pains she's really good at uh, targeting all those areas and she's going to be doing a demo we brought her, we're bringing it in tonight at our casino night so if you're coming you're going to be able to see her she's going to be here for an hour giving a few massages at the golf simulator so it's going to be at four times i mean four uh suits. four suites so you have your own room to yourself in the chair massage, yeah. And then uh, we're doing our mash party, May 19th. This is uh, five, six weeks out, but what I wanted to, to mention is we're still kind of running through the last final details before it's going to be open for reservations. But we are doing a – we're celebrating veterans during the month of May or our armed forces <laughs> in the month of, month of May. 
And so um, what we want and what we, the reason to talk about it now is that we're going to have display tables it, or uh, uh, kind of hanging situations if necessary for those that want to, would like to display their uniform um, at the event. So uh, we've got this wonderful mash party where we've got, you know, camouflage decorations. We've got, uh, you know, section instead of plates, we're going to have section trays like you would. Um, the food's going to be fairly in line with us, just very similar to, to the movie uh, or to the TV show. Um, but we do want to recognize those that uh, have served and, you know, we are requesting that if you want to um, uh, display your uniform or photo or anything of that uh, nature that to please contact us so we can start scheduling that. Yes, Jeanette. Actually, we grabbed the same cans from the 70s. Yes. And uh, we haven't opened them, so um, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll wait and see. Uh, yeah. Good old MREs, they should be fine 40 years later, right? Absolutely. 50 years later. So, you know, you just add water. We'll have a water station, you just fill it. No. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll have some pretty delicious food for it. So, but it will be very like similar in the style in that regard. So, uh, it should be a lot of fun. This was an event that was an idea from a member on the bed and breakfast trip. So, when we went to Whidbey Island on the BB trip, uh, uh, a couple of the members came up with the idea of this TV show and doing an event around it. And so, this is their their event. Uh, hopefully they sign up for it. So um, <laughs> right. I think it's, it's appropriate that we're doing a match party. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we love them. We make them happen or try to at least. <laughs> um, so it'd be really nice to, to offer this. It'd be fun. Sorry, this is interesting timing. It's highly recommended. It's as highly well. recommended. Yes. But this is also interesting timing. I don't know if any of you saw, but I think literally earlier in the week, one of the um, actors from MASH actually passed away. Oh, really? Yeah. I know. Um, can't remember his name, but I literally just saw it, and I was like, wow, we'll have to... Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, just lot, like last week, I saw uh, something about that, so we'll definitely have to celebrate him as well while we're having our MASH party. General manager update for uh, the week. So just a little touch on what we talked about last week, which was we have a bunch of new team members coming on board. Uh, really exciting. We've got, like I said, Dino has been promoted to director of food and beverage. Our new food and beverage manager starting today, Leslie Westfall. Uh, she'll be here tonight. We have these two that have been recently promoted. Uh, our uh, Pilates and Zumba instructor, uh, Giovanna is coming back, so she's going to be available in the next few weeks. Uh, Paula's coming back uh, in two weeks. Um, uh, what was the other one on those? Uh, we promoted our, one of our servers to a lead server position. So Jocelyn Parker is our new lead server, and we'll be helping with uh, the, the training that's going to be going on with the front of the house team. Uh, we just promoted our one of our uh, porters to... Uh, our admin position, Sarah is our, our new admin, so she's going to be working with all of our members on their member accounting and member billing situation. So a lot of changes at the club, which is really awesome. We finally, uh, as of uh, this, the end of this weekend, once uh, um, Leslie. Leslie walks through the doors here at 1 o'clock, uh, we will finally be fully staffed in regards to the leadership team, which is really exciting. We have not been... We haven't been above 50% fully staffed in the leadership team since August. So um, huge, huge, huge thing. Uh, as I've been wearing so many different hats, it's been really frustrating. Um, and so glad that we're able to finally get the right people in place um, and really take a step forward and really focus in on this post-pandemic era now. So um, uh, really, really excited. We had a big meeting yesterday, leadership team meeting yesterday uh, with the entire leadership group. Uh, even Leslie, and so it was really good to get everybody in the same room. We were together for uh, five, six hours, really kind of talking about expectations and goals, uh, what we want to work on, what's priority number one, um, and so it's really exciting to set that path and really move forward to towards it. So um, going to see more of that as we continue to uh, get through the month here. We're also going to do a meet the manager night, so on the last Thursday of the month, 
Uh, after Lodge 101, we're going to offer a kind of meet the manager, happy hour, member mixer type event. We're still kind of working through the details, but uh, definitely have, a, you know, some wine available and all the managers will be on site to kind of talk about everything that they've got going on uh, and, and meet the entire team that we have now in place, which would be really exciting. So um, once again, Robert's working on uh, the pool, getting that uh, set and ready for uh, the big three week uh, overhaul, which is great. Um, he's, we're working on our landscape um, company who's, you know, the grass is starting to grow. So if you just notice, our, we sprayed our moss about a week and a half ago. And so it's starting to turn brown so that they can then go through and rake it out. Uh, so that's exciting. We're gonna work on some weeding in some specific areas, uh, working on replacing some trees in some areas that have uh, died or, or not kind of made it through. Um, and same thing with some plants. So uh, Robert and his team are working through that. Uh, we just recently uh, shampooed some of the carpets, which has been great, and polished up the floors once again, as we've been trying to be doing that on a more regular basis. Uh, and, and just getting Robert's got a couple new players as well, so he's kind of getting his team lined up. Uh, once again, Dino's working hard, learning the job of uh, being a director of food and beverage and what that entails. Uh, so he's doing an awesome job. Team loves him both front and back of the house. Has worked out really well there. Okay, so yeah. <clears throat> so we are looking for what we call a chef de cuisine position. So it's uh, not an executive chef. It's uh, uh, just kind of a step below that. Uh, we've got a couple candidates that we are uh, uh, in the process of interviewing right now. Uh, Dino's still going to oversee most of the kitchen operation. Um, and so right now he's still doing the scheduling, uh, between him and our sous chef, they're doing the ordering and inventories. Uh, Dino's doing all the menu writing. So, uh, Dino still, you know, he's a chef at heart for the last 30 years. So we, we don't want to take away too much from him. And, and so we kind of, he kept the fun aspects of the job, which is the menu writing and that kind of stuff. So he's just still do that. And we're going to hire more uh, people that are going to be the, the operators and the execution aspect of Dino's vision. So Scotty, our, our uh, sous chef, has done an awesome job. So Dino still comes up with the menus and the weekly specials. And then Scotty executes to Dino's vision is how that's going to work. So, And we believe that we're going to hire somebody just above Scotty to make sure that he has the support as Scott's really new to the position um, and really new to management in general and needs to have someone else to help uh, make sure that uh, the team that we have hired back there has the leadership and, and the details as we're going to continue to open up more days. As you can tell, we're doing <laughs> five to ten events a week, right? And so it's a lot to maintain and a lot for one person like Scott to do. So we'll have two people pretty much in leadership positions in the kitchen to help run and, and keep it moving in the right direction. So And two in the office. And two in the office, yeah. So... Um, Lunch is uh, slowly picking up. Um, we're still, you know, only having about uh, four to maybe eight tables during lunch. So still lots of opportunity, lots of uh, uh, lots of time slots for sure. But just, yeah, it's still getting the word out and, and it's getting busier and busier each week. And we know a lot of members are traveling right now as it is that shoulder season, which is typical travel time for our members. Um, the, the weather's getting a little bit better. So members are a little more out and about out in the community or, or out in the day trips and things like that. So it's a little bit kind of tough time in that regard, but um, it is slower than we expected, but we, we just, it'll keep snowballing to bigger and better things. And that is 11 o'clock. Yep. We open at 11. And that's Wednesday, through Wednesday through Sunday. Yep. 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 And then, um, yeah, it will. It definitely will. And like we've been saying the last few weeks, lunch sometimes has to kind of be built in your routine and, you know, has to remember, oh, yeah, the club is open for lunch. So it takes yeah. a little while to kind of build it back into there. And so um, uh, so that's fine. We're, we're, we know that it'll, it'll get there. So no risk of, of getting rid of it or anything. So it'll be good. It just takes a little bit of time. And you can have big breakfast. It's the last Sunday of every month. It's not just once in a while. It's every no, month. every Sunday of the month, last Sunday of the month. Yep. So we've had it uh, every last Sunday so far this year. Um, we a little bit slower last month in March. 
but we also had uh, breakfast for dinner and waffle buffet mm -hmm. the Friday before. So we think that that kind of affected it because we only had about 35 people go through brunch um, last uh, Sunday or two Sundays ago, whenever that was. And then this month we'll have Easter and last Sunday brunch kind of fighting against each other. Next month we'll have Mother's Day and, East, and uh, last Sunday brunch. So they will fight against each other for a little bit. Uh, but that's okay. We're 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 made that commitment to still offer it, and it still is successful. So we're happy with having it. So, um, and then we're looking at you know, like I said, we're gonna keep looking at getting into Tuesdays and and opening more. We're hoping that Mondays will be coming back soon, and then Tuesdays for the restaurant coming back soon as well. So, and we also offer in home catering. So if you have like any event like if you're having people over or something you can also just call me or call the lodge and we can organize like food and just bring it over so that is to facilitate a lot of in-home parties that you might be doing or just get-togethers but if your family comes over unexpected you can just give us a call and organize your food we've seen a lot of members do makeup parties birthday parties anniversaries um, any type of celebration, a lot of the phones are ringing off the hook for Cecilia as members are like, oh yeah, pandemic's winding down. I'd love to celebrate my wedding that I didn't get to or celebrate a anniversary that we weren't able to do or a special birthday um, uh, time. So um, we're seeing a lot of those and booking a lot of those. Um, and even to be honest, December, if you're thinking about doing, doing something in December, December's yeah. going up fast already and it's only April. So we've already got three, four, five parties in December and uh, some of those are on key Saturdays. So, um, it, uh, it's the, that aspect, the private event world is, is going really well. So, uh, I also wanted to mention our new food and beverage manager, Leslie, as we were talking about the kitchen, she also was originally a chef. So she's a chef converted to front of the house. Just like Dino is going to be a chef converted to front of the house yeah. too, so it's it's really going to provide uh, a great mindset, great great uh, training opportunity, but also additional support for both front and back of the house. So we're really excited with the team that's been that yeah. we put together. So um, you know, it's going to be good. Yep. Always. Awesome. Yes. Yep. Has there been any talk about? Having that more than just once a week, and maybe not the hour <clears throat> that it is now, but I mean, every time we have these packs. Yeah, so there's a couple things about that. Pre pandemic, we used to do it on Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, and, and we probably will do something very similar again. I don't like doing happier hour every single day, and the reason is because that's what makes Wednesday so special, right? It's great to have. 50, 60 people in the grand living room, all connecting, meeting new people, socializing. And typically there are some regulars, but there's also a lot of new people that come different each, each week. And if you, if we do happier hour on a more consistent basis, that 60 people then kind of spread out over four or five days. And so they need to get smaller groups. And I think it kind of ruins the buzz a little bit about it. Now, the other part of that too is the financial aspect. Happy hour nights, to be honest, is not really uh, profitable for the team, right? They're, they're collecting service charge or tips on food that's really inexpensive. And as we've struggled with hiring and retaining team members because of financial reasons, having happy hour on a more consistent basis, it, it would not keep and retain the team that we have. To be honest, some of the team members that we do have came to us because all of Up Garden offers um, just, you know, these special $10 menus seven days a week. And because of that, they were losing significant amount of tips. Or um, uh, there's another major restaurant that kind of went to a happier hour thing on a more consistent base, seven days a week thing. And because of that, the amount of take home that they were getting at the end of their shift was dramatically reduced. And because of that, they're like, why? Well, that's not what I signed up for. It's not what I need to live off of. And so that's why. We've been able to recruit those, and and so that's that's another reason why we tend to not do happier hour on, on a regular basis, day in and day out, because it really does affect. It's a fun environment for the members, yes, it, but it's very hard, sustainable environment for our team. I understand not happening every day of the week, but yeah. you know, to go back to the two days of the week, and the reason I say this is because I've had many times from other neighbors outside of our neighborhood, out of the hood, right. saying that, you know, they go over and it's happy, you don't go in. Oh yeah. Or they go in and they're like, oh, I'm not going to go in. Yeah. Or they're like, oh, I'm not going to go in. Yeah. 
That's the one thing. So they don't go in. So there's a lot of understanding. You have too many people in there. You have staff. And sure. Them. Um, and, and so we used to do it on Tuesdays. And then during, um, like, football season, we would do it on Sundays. Right. Um, the last year, we did our own special Hawks Day game, uh, happy hour menu. But pre-pandemic, we used to do just the same happier hour menu that we did on Wednesdays, we did on Sundays. So we sprinkle it in every once in a while, but usually with Tuesdays, we, we add it back for that day. Yeah. Yeah. So. And, and also, we have to think about, you know, it being, you know, lucrative to the servers, you know, because, uh, you know, the food aspect of it. Yep. Um, you go, and there's so many people here. We order food, and we wait, and we wait, and we wait, and we wait, and we wait before we get our food. Oh, yeah. So, and understand the service because that's an improvement. Right. Yeah. So you have so many orders. Yep. So that's understandable. But if you cut it up, maybe you can have it twice a week. You may not have. You may be drawing the same amount of money or more. Sure. And people would be more satisfied because they get food sooner. Sooner because you know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. And, and it's. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's funny because I just had the same conversation with a member the other day, yesterday, and they were, I think, in here on uh, Wednesday happier hour, and there was two members. One was saying, hey, food takes a long time during happier hour, and the other member that I was talking to, the um, the other person there was like, I ordered the same thing on happier hour, and I got it in like five minutes, and they were like, so... Yeah, more inconsistent in that regard rather than that's kind of the standard. So it was just kind of funny. One was telling me, oh, it takes too long. And the other one was like, oh, no, it came, like, really fast. And we were so surprised that it came so fast. So, yeah. Um, but, it, yeah, definitely it's that consistency factor. And we do have – we're working with the team to get there. So. Yeah. And we're also – not, we're not just hiring upper-level chefs, but we're also hiring a lot of line chefs. So oh, yeah. our team is definitely, definitely going to grow in a lot of different aspects. So It's yeah. awesome. It's a lot of really exciting months to come. Yeah. What other questions are out there? Online, do we have anything from the virtual world? Crickets. Crickets. Well, everyone, we've got a big day planned with the casino night and, and just lots of stuff going on. Make sure you're checking MTL. If you have any questions, let us know. But... Other than that, enjoy the weekend. Hopefully it doesn't snow this weekend. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.